Juneteenth on the March, Seniors Walk and Seniors Talk. All this and more as the Stafford Weekly News starts now. Welcome to the Friday, June 24th edition of the Stafford Weekly News. I'm Randall Williams. Juneteenth is now a national holiday, but locally, its celebration has been going on for years. John King walks us through this year's celebration. Welcome to Missouri City to the Juneteenth celebration. For 20 years, Missouri City has been hosting this event. For the last 20 years, we're the only city that does it in Fort Bend County. Juneteenth 20 year celebration. First year, it's a national federal holiday, and we're doing it right here in Missouri City. participating in this celebration is that we are such a diverse community college and because we are such, such a diverse community college we we try to support each and every race and ethnic group and today we are here supporting um, the freedom of slaves which it was so sad because in this part of the country we didn't find out until years after the emancipation. And I am a, also a resident of Missouri City and I'm a history maker in Missouri City. First African American woman to serve on Missouri City City Council. First African American woman appointed to would be an ISD. And to sit here on this in this carriage with my good friend shows you that we've come a mighty long way. And I'm just grateful. On a far more serious note, 
gun violence is now an everyday event in the news, and Stafford police want you to have the best chance to survive such incidents. Here's the story of a training event at City Hall. These are dangerous times. If for some reason you need proof of that, Stafford City employees recently gathered for active shooter training. I've been an instructor for uh, active shooter training for the law enforcement side for about 10 years. And uh, I got very proficient at that. My agency said, you know what, you're very good at what you do. However, it's now time to bring the civilian element uh, involved and get them involved with it. So they sent me to a couple classes and uh, got me trained up. So now, basically today was uh, what we call the craze, which is civilian response to an active shooter event. And uh, this was set up by uh, our HR department who sent out an email and requested for people to sign up. And we had a very good showing today and uh, for the first showing of hopefully many, but uh, that's basically what it was. It's a, it's a how to, how as a civilian, uh, you can protect yourself and ho hopefully ultimately uh, survive an active shooter event. We have uh, several churches here in the city of Stafford that I presented this class for. Um, a lot of the businesses in Stafford, uh, it's, uh, it's been very well received since I've been doing it. I've logged over 3,000 uh, citizens that I've trained in it, so it's going very well. If you're ever involved in an active shooter event, there's three main things that you need to focus on. That's avoiding the situation if possible. If you cannot avoid the situation by e running from it, getting outside of the building, getting away from where the bad activity is occurring, then you're gonna to need to attempt to deny the bad activity from getting any closer to you. So whether that means securing your office space, your classroom, your somewhere in the warehouse facility, basically it's hiding uh, in a sense from the bad stuff that is trying to get to you. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you do have the legal right to defend yourself against somebody trying to cause you harm. So uh, the third thing we do is to defend or fight, which uh, basically is you are trying to subdue the person who's trying to attack you in a manner that will render them either separated from the West weapon system or to the point where you can now employ one of the other tactics to either get out of the situation or go back into a hide. But ultimately, if you've engaged in the, the defensive portion of it, you might as well uh, hold them until law enforcement arrives, if possible. I have no problem coming out to HOA meetings. I come out to, you know, if, if we can do a neighborhood meeting and three or four houses and, you know, the more people that know about this, because this isn't just for where you work. We're starting to see it, unfortunately, on mainstream media that this is occurring everywhere. Grocery stores, schools, uh, sporting events, concert venues. It's, it's, unfortunately, it's here. It's not going anywhere. I want to get the information out there. City of Stafford wants to get the information out there give you the tools that you need to at least give you a higher probability of surviving an active shooter event. So please reach out to the city of Stafford, reach out to the Stafford Police Department. Again, my name is Ryan Ward. Uh, my email address is readily available, phone number 281-261-3950, ask for Ward. They'll get you through to either me or my voicemail and we'll get you the information that you need. For Stafford Weekly News, this is Randall Williams. Bow ties and pearls next. In Stafford, diversity is not just a number, it's who we are. When you are here, you become part of the story. You can sleep well knowing we're always on the job and looking out for you. It's a great place for growth and opportunity. Tradition starts here. We teach your children and we stick around for your grandchildren. We are one. We are Stafford. This is the city of Stafford, and we are one. High school graduation is over, but there were certain traditions leading up to it. We start off Spartan Spotlight with a trip down Senior Walk Lane. What you are witnessing is a tradition in schools everywhere, and in this case, SMSD, the Senior Walk. 
2014, we started a thing called the Senior Walk in Stafford Municipal School District. Really, it was just an adaptation on something many school superintendents and administrations had done probably years before, but we wanted to do something where the kids, we were celebrating kids who had been in Stafford, and, and plus they had been part of our small, close-knit community. Stafford is, and Stafford Municipal School District, as many of you know, is located all in one large acreage, where all of the campuses are on one large acreage. And so it's very possible that a child can start their elementary or pre-K experience and then walk through every one of those classrooms and see some of the teachers and the staff members and the front office staff and the custodians and groundskeepers and principals that they knew when they were coming through school. So we started the Stafford Senior Walk where they get to go through and have that final walk through all of the buildings to celebrate along with those people who helped make them successful. the senior walk, the seniors gathered once more in the competition gym for another tradition, senior awards. So Stafford has uh, continued to uh, just blossom and grow year and year after year, especially with our seniors at the high school. We start to plant them as baby seeds in elementary school, pre-K, the early childhood center, the middle school, and then they blossom based on whatever programs we have. And so over the years, the programs have grown and grown and grown. Uh, during our senior awards assembly, you probably got to see what, at least 47 graduates from Houston Community College uh, who got their associate's degree or level one certificates that we had never had, and that can, number continues to grow every year. You got to see more and more students who had uh, won and competed in statewide UIL competitions. And then you even got to see a few kids who had competed in national competitions and won as well as getting to see kids receive scholarships locally as well as statewide and some nationally depending on what university or if it was in the armed services uh, and what they got to do for the senior awards. For Spartan Spotlight, this is Randall Williams. Best of luck on the next phase of your life, seniors. But what about our younger students? John King attended an event where the school and the community come together to give young people the tools and knowledge they need for success. We are hosting uh, Bow Ties and Pearls. Uh, it's an event for boys and girls. Uh, we're talking about etiquette classes, uh, the importance of good citizenship, uh, helping the students to understand that their manners really do matter uh, and to stay focused, uh, to increase their self-esteem, uh, to encourage them to be ready uh, to go on to middle school. It's important because oftentimes our kids are not exposed uh, to these types of opportunities. Our kids are really confined to their neighborhood uh, neighborhood store, neighborhood schools, uh, and we want to expose them to help them uh, to think outside the box, if you will. It was important because I wanted the young men and women to know that uh, their future is bright and don't let statistics or things like that hold them back. The only element that can hold them back is their own minds, their own beliefs on what they can do and what they can be. But that education is the key to open the doors to a lot of different uh, new adventures for the young men and women. We wanted the kids to dress up. When you look good, you feel good, all right? And having the bow ties and the pearls, uh, we just see our students walking around with a different attitude because they feel good. It's very exciting for me. Uh, it's one thing that I try to do. I, I get a lot of uh, speaking engagements. But when it has to do with young people, I try my best to make, that, to make it because I know how important it is for uh, young individuals to see people who look like them in those type of positions so they know that they could strive to do the same thing. When I was talking to them about the interaction with law enforcement, 
that the average time is anywhere from five to seven minutes at the most 10 minutes is that it's getting home safely. Do what the officer, the officer tell you to do. Just do what they ask you to do. If they do something wrong, go home safely, and then come back and report that. You won't win that incident at that scene on the street. Go home safely to file your complaint. What makes this program unique, in my opinion, is the fact that we're bringing in outside speakers, okay? People that they don't see every day, uh, and having those individuals share their life stories and how executing manners and, you know, staying in school, making good choices and having good consequences uh, uh, helps to encourage the students, if you will. Uh, a lot of times, even growing up, I'm sure you know, kids don't want to listen to the parents, but they hear the same message from somebody else they think that it is just the script, you know? And so I just think that hearing uh, a voice that they don't hear every day kind of helps make the difference. And it confirms what mom, dad, grandmother, the teachers have been saying all year long. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, like I said, bringing in the speakers, um, they've lived it. You know, growing up, now that they're adults, parents, uh, mentors and other organizations, uh, it helps to connect the community with the schools, okay? And growing up, we always heard it takes a village to raise one. And so we're just incorporating the village here today. Go Boom, next. You can try, but you won't find another city like Stafford, Texas. Serving our community just like you like it. Taking care of you and your home since 1945. We believe in STEM to learn and STEM to earn. We're heading into college certified and career ready. As a former student of Stafford, I take pride in keeping our classroom safe. We are Stafford, we are one. Take it from me, we're all getting older. And with that comes new concerns and options. Fernando Ramirez takes a walk on the gray side with this year's Senior Expo. Senior Trade Show is the premier, fastest growing lifestyle, educational, and entertainment expo for the older adult. Senior Trade Show exists to connect seniors to resources to help them make informed decisions. We hold in-person informational events and host an online community connecting businesses and organizations, community resources to the senior population. Our events feature a wide variety of vendor experts who are dedicated to making the golden years for our senior citizens more pleasurable and safer through education. Our events are planned out a, a year out, so from coordinating to um, reaching out to sponsors, to potential exhibitors, to marketing, to reaching out to community partners, senior centers, churches. We do quite a lot of legwork you know, to make sure that this, this is a success. Because what we're trying to do is announce to the senior community that there are resources out here for you to make decisions right now, not when you're in a critical situation and you're, you're looking for it. So that's uh, one of our challenges. Partnership is important, right? Being able to look at how can we see that healthcare journey of the seniors and make sure that they have everything they need. And that's exactly what these expos do. It brings in the vendors that will help support the seniors and allows the seniors to have a marketplace per se to see what's available to them. So it's been great for us. So we're offering information about our Medicare Advantage Health Plan. Uh, we do have benefits this year that are new. Um, that the seniors will benefit from knowing. So those include assistance with food, also with dental, with the vision. So these are benefits that not everybody gets automatically. So we're here to bring that information so that they will keep money in their pockets and not have to use their funds, but actually use Cigna to help them cover those costs. Seniors Trade Show has perfected the art of reaching out to the senior community. 
Trust is a big issue with seniors, and uh, we can confidently tell you that seniors love and trust the Senior Trade Show brand. For every time we um, advertise our events, they show up. For every time we reach out to our community partners, senior centers that we partner with, they honor our invitation. So if you are a senior focused brand looking to um, reach seniors, if seniors are your ideal audience, caregivers, veterans, as well as their family, service providers, or looking for networking opportunities, opportunities to collaborate, to partner, Senior Trade Show is the event that you need to, organization that you need to partner with. I have so many experiences. It's, first, it's fun. Say again, something to look forward to, because I was here before. And thirdly, I learn. It's very nice. I just went to a pain relief and they put some patches on me. Within three minutes, I could feel the difference. My pain was going away. Everybody need to come when it's another one <laughs> and enjoy themselves. I would definitely love to thank um, our exhibitors, our sponsors, our partners. Uh, without um, these organizations, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have resources to exhibit to our senior audience. And I also want to thank our senior um, guests as well, because without a, an audience, we wouldn't have um, anyone to show to our exhibitors. So I just want to thank them for always supporting us, for coming together to share um, what they have. It takes a lot of um, support from sponsorships to having a great team to put on the straight shows. And I just, that's what I wanted to say. Just say thank you to everyone who's been supporting us for the past eight years. I hope all my fellow dads had a good Father's Day. But Fernando Ramirez found a unique way to celebrate at the George Ranch, black powder, and big guns. Well, today we invited fathers to come here to the George Ranch Historical Park and learn how to properly load and fire these black powder firearms. A number of different firearms were used. Uh, we have a Northwest trade gun. We have the 75 caliber brown vest, which was the equipment of the Mexican army during the Texas Revolution. Uh, we also had available uh, some pistols, uh, Kentucky pistols, along with military smoothbore pistols. And so during the course of this uh, class today, we teach these dads out there how to get the powder charge. You place that down the barrel of the black powder firearm, whichever it may be. You take the ramrod out and shove the cartridge all the way down. And then during the next step, you're going to prime where you pull the hammer back, put a small gunpowder charge here on the side right here, bring the frizzin back and you're ready to fire. So when you pull the trigger, Flint strikes the steel, makes a spark, spark ignites a gunpowder okay. charge, fire. and you successfully fire the black powder gun. These are authentic reproductions, all of them. Uh, they're not props, uh, and these are all live fire capable. Uh, we do not shoot antique firearms, original firearms. Everything that's uh, shot out here are real live firing reproductions of firearms that were around during the Texas Revolution. Well, it's about bringing history to life. Instead of seeing it on TV or reading it in a book, one of the things we strive for here at the George Ranch is to bring history to life. And so being able to see it, to smell it, to feel it, and for the fathers to be able to actually do it, what better way of bringing history to the families around here? So the place that you get to come visit, the log cabin, is a dog-run cabin, very similar to the style of the homes that were of that time. Actually, it's pretty about as close as we can come to the original. And you come here, and instead of just looking at things, you could pick things up, you could touch things, you want to learn how to do something. We could teach you all different kinds of things. So we could just drop that chart and drop the paper down, remove the ramrod. Ramming here, don't hold high, always stay close. Okay, he's gonna ram the charge, drop that down, take it, re return it back, and we are set to go. Order arms, good. When you see somebody really, really get it, really engage, really wanna learn how to do something, and you see the, the spark in their eyes, that's what really is like the best part about it. And you get questions, and some of the most brilliant questions, you know, come from like the kids who come out and getting to answer some of the questions and curiosities that are out there, that's even, that's sometimes even better. But I just like, you know, instead of talking about it, doing it and being able to share that with our guests. Today was a lot of fun to get to see the smile on the dad's faces. That was just absolutely amazing. And you see the, when they pull the trigger, you hear that first boom. And you see, you don't see a 40 year old dad, you see a four year old dad. Just all the excitement, joy. If there's any stress, it's instantaneously gone. 
that's really what brings it, that makes it worth it to me. That's a wrap on our news for this week. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at Stafford Weekly News, I'm Randall Williams. May all your news be good news. This program was produced on the Stafford campus of Houston Community College.